Ladies and gentlemen, love they say knows no bounds and one such boundary was broken today for the first time in this part of the world. As the world celebrates Pride Month in June, Thailand is one step away from becoming the first Southeast Asian country to legalize same-sex marriage. Lawmakers in Thailand voted to approve the Marriage Equality Bill with the Senate passing the bill by 130 votes to 4. It was approved by the House of Representatives in March. The legislation would become a law after it is reviewed by a Senate committee and the Constitutional Court and receives the royal assent from the king, a formality that is widely expected to be granted. But here's what the bill states. It calls marriage a partnership between two people who are 18 years or above without specifying their gender. It also gives LGBTQ plus couples equal rights to adopt children claim tax allowances, inherit property, and give consent for medical treatment when their partners are incapacitated. But this decision has not been an overnight move. For more than 20 years, the community has been struggling for marriage to be legalized. With this soon-to-be law, the first such weddings are expected to take place later this year, 120 days after the law is announced in the Royal Gazette of the country. Now, here in India, we know that we did get close to legalizing same-sex marriage, but the Supreme Court passed it on to the parliament. Will India and other countries follow suit? And how does it change the dynamics of how the world perceives LGBTQ plus members? Let's deep dive into it and understand more on this. On the broadcast, I'm joined by Paras Thoma. He's an actor. I'm also joined by Neil Pate. He's a journalist. Good evening and namaskar to both of you. Paras, let me start with you first. Um, you know, this, of course, comes as a good news, the first country in Southeast Asia to be legalizing same-sex marriage. Uh, but, of course, it's just the first step in what has been a long, long struggle. You know, Thailand, in any case, has always been a very safe haven for the LGBTQ community. It's been for years together that yeah. a lot of gay men who actually face so much discrimination here, there is so much homophobia here. For a lot of people, Bangkok, Phuket, Pattaya has always been a very easy escape to go and be able to live freely. In fact, I was in Thailand about two, three weeks ago just now. One other thing I've actually seen a lot is a lot of Indian gay men who are unable to dress the way they want to. If they want to really go out and really express themselves, that becomes a free society. Also, you know, it's great because when, when like you said, we came, we were like just a couple of meters away from being able to get that sanction where they could have probably said, okay, we can have same-sex marriage in this country, but all in good time. Also, Thailand, in any case, the good part about that country is they've also been a country which has been setting a standard for to be a first in multiple things. They were also the first Southeast Asian country to legalize marijuana. Uh, even the Americans had done it. What yeah. is interesting about this is, you know, when you go to Thailand, when you go to Cambodia, when you go to Vietnam, when you go to Bali, you do see that there is a lot of Hindu influence there. You're also seeing that there is a lot of Ganesha everywhere. So even culturally for us, when you go to these countries, there is some sort of similarity in our culture. A lot of their streets are named after our gods. So when you're taking a cue from that, when Thailand goes out and says, now we are legally doing this, it's a beautiful feeling. And I'm hoping we can sort of, uh, you know, take a little book from their leaf. Otherwise, I'm a very proud Indian boy. And I say that, you know, the world should be le uh, learning from India. But I think when it comes to this, I think it would be a great country. It's a neighbor of ours where we can actually definitely learn this from. I know even Nepal has a interesting history. Yeah. They've also, I think they registered their first same-sex marriage, uh, if I'm not wrong, just in April this year. So it's great because I can really see yes. Asia is also coming yes. into its own. Ever since we decriminalized homosexuality, the perception yeah. in India changed. You know, a lot of young guys would write to me and say, Mummy, Daddy, manate nahi hai, mujhe maarte hai, ye karte hai, wo karte hai. And I would tell a lot of people as an activist yeah. saying, you know, now when you go and tell your mom and dad, say, bhai, ab sab Supreme Court ne aapko izazat de di hai, that was a great way to change that mind frame. The sentiment began to change. So the moment something like this happens, mm. public perception mm. follows the law. So I'm really hoping we do yeah. take a cue from this. And it's almost but like we have a great uh, test to see I'll what tell happens you what, here. Let me take this across to Neil. You know, one of the arguments that the other side gives is, you know, fine, we're decriminalizing it. That's all that you need. Why do you need to get an approval for marriage? Why do you need, uh, you know, all of the other rights that come in? We are decriminalizing it. Live your life. Go ahead. See, I think what is important we need to realize in India is as a democracy, you know, all our top political leaders, and I would say nearly 90% of them, they've been harping and talking about inclusivity and diversity. You know, we've just had our elections and we all know what the results have been. 
And in India, you have some of the top political leaders, you know, claiming that they are Janta ka Seva. They talk about acceptance and inclusivity. I mean, Thailand has shown what inclusivity and diversity means. You know, that's one thing which is a stark reminder. I think what we need in India is that we need politicians, we need political parties, we need our parliamentarians who understand what the problem the LGBTQ plus community faces. And when we talk of inclusivity, mm. I mean, mm. inclusivity means for everyone, not just for a select few. So marriage equality no. is important, think, and that's exactly what Neil, the Supreme uh, you know, do you think the younger ones, the younger politicians do understand that or they do have that openness? Absolutely. But perhaps they're just, you know, they just have to toe the line when it comes to the political party line? You actually asked a very interesting question. And, you know, after the Supreme Court ruling, I mean, me and my partner of 20 years, we were part of the petitioners, you know. So we were a little let down by the SC ruling. But yes, I mean, some of the observations that the Supreme Court made were important. And if you remember right, you know, in October, the Supreme Court was of the view that the parliament, the parliamentarians are the one who must decide on bringing in gender equality and same-sex marriages, you know, through a consensus. In fact, Justice Bhatt mm. also said that the center's mm. high-powered committee must take a call on making policy changes. But has anything happened till date? Mm. In fact, we've had elections, and if you see how many political parties had anything to do with, you know, yeah. uh, LGBTQI rights or even gender equality rights, and when I say gender, I include women. Yeah. You know, it's you know, how many I, of them I even agree with you, Neil, on that? this, but also I think perhaps the onus lies on us as well. How many of us actually question our politicians when they come and we you know did. ask and for and our to be vote, honest, I uh, did. whether it's about LGBTQ plus issues? And sure, I, I I'm, I'm sure you did, I but did. not you know, a you know lot what? of people like you actually did take up the issue when they asked for our votes. Uh, but Paris, and you know, when it comes to Thailand, and I was reading this somewhere, it's very important and crucial uh, that it also has a lot, this, this decision to legalize same-sex marriage also has a lot to do with uh, the kind of uh, economics involved in Thailand's revenue, you know, in, in, in the kind of revenue that is generated in tourism and welcoming all sorts of people, uh, not just restricting to a particular community, but welcoming everybody from across the world to come into Thailand. I mean, commerce is most certainly a very big reason, and I'm sure it is also a very big incentive for that country. Like I was talking about marijuana, that's also a very big reason people go there. The same is with this. For a lot of people, imagine you're going to a country where you are not being treated like a criminal every single day. You can walk into spas, you can walk into gay clubs. I mean, I have been out and about since I was the age of 18. But even here, when I go to a club, and you do have gay parties in Mumbai, you have do gay, gay parties in Delhi, but it's definitely not the same because there's always something around us which even now doesn't necessarily make you feel completely free. But in a place like this, 100% tourism, you know, but the other thing with the because, marriage... Because bitten, you know, when that one saying, judgmental need... gaze is enough. Well, gaze, interesting, that choice of words there, but... Uh... You know, the, the, the part is when, when you talked about the fact that why, after decriminalization, why do you need this? Today, we're good looking, we're healthy, it's very easy for us to get yeah. partners. When we're getting older, I want to be able to get into hospital and my partner should have that right. I want to be able to buy property together. You know, one of the things yes. that the gay community is accused of very often, yes. unfortunately, is promiscuity. Why? Because there's nothing socially binding us. You know, when you've got a union, when you can really say, hey, this man is now... I'm committing to this man. There is some sort of, sort of a social construct that comes in. I'm a 40-year-old CEO and a founder. My company did 300 crores last year. I'm always thinking of the fact that I want to have a baby. But there's nothing I can do in this country today to be able to have that legacy pass on. One of my most primal paternal instincts is something I cannot follow. So when people talk about the fact that why do you want marriage, just like you have a right and everyone else has a right to raise that family, you know when they say homosexual people can be depressed, sad, suicidal... No matter what I do, my partner is just, I can just change my partner at any time because there's nothing really binding us. And I think that is where Thailand is setting our example because 
Hey, we beyond just, you know, when, when you talk about homosexuality, everyone just thinks it's promiscuities and gay parties and masquerades and charades and whatnot. But we're also people who are looking for love, commitment, mm. to be able to be together. And I think that is what marriage equality sure. will do. You know, the one other thing about lesbians, which is so interesting, I was in a gym in Delhi and I was shooting this girl, walked up to me and she said, all you gay boys have taken our thunder. Because she said, the fact is, the gay boys still get represented, but lesbians in this country have zero representation. And I thought that was such a valid mm. point. So I'm hoping we can move towards that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Neil, how far do you think we are from actually reaching where, uh, you know, Paris is talking about where people will not be looked at judgmentally and they will be accepted for who they are? I think it's just a question of time. I think all of us know that love is love and we are on the right path, you know, and the Supreme Court actually said it, that it's for the parliamentarians. Now, we have approached some of them. Some of them are very, very positive and supportive. Let me be honest, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually are very supportive. But they're a little wary and scared as to what will someone senior from the party say for their own views. Some of them have actually come out in support. But the point here, what I'm trying to say is, you know, we need to have policies which are inclusive, not wait for a catastrophe to happen yes. and then try and draft policies, you know. We have been trying to do that for a long time and I think it's just a question of time, you know. It will happen. It's happened all over Southeast Asia. I mean, you have three or four countries which are on their way. They have legalized same-sex marriages and unions and I don't think India will be very far. I am quite positive about it. And that was one of the reasons why we actually hmm. decided to petition in the Supreme Court. Can I also ask you, you know, it's, um, it's actually quite, um, I don't know, heartening, if that's the right word to use, for you to say that it's just a matter of time. Uh, of course, love is love, but, uh, you know, doesn't it get frustrating uh, when you have to wait for so long just for the basics? I totally agree with what you say because, I mean, I'm 50 plus, my partner is 60 plus, we've had lovely 20 plus years together. And in fact, you know, it's a little disheartening, but I can share it with you all because you'll be able to understand he's going to get a Lifetime Achievement Award in the US in September. He's a neurologist and I'm a journalist. And he just said, like, I wish you were there with me when I'm getting the award. And I said, yes, I mean, but I'm busy with elections and all these things over here. I've applied for the U.S. visa. Now, it's a very basic thing, but, you know, had I been straight or for a heterosexual couple, if you're a married woman, it just comes by default. Do you understand? Although he and I have been married in London, but in India, there's no validity. When we are outside the world, we are treated on par with other yeah. couples, you know. And here I'm waiting, so I have to write a detailed explanation of what is the status of my relationship with him, and we are still waiting. I mean, you know, so I mean, how inclusive yeah. is this? Or how equal, when I say, these are very yeah. important words, you know, equality and inclusive, which our constitution talks yeah. about, which we take for granted. Yeah. And those who took for granted, no. they saw the results, yeah. you know. So that is very, very important. Yeah. And I think that's what the younger generation, whether you're straight or LGBTQ, does not matter. What they want is to embrace their identity and celebrate love. I think that is important. So, Absolutely. yeah, coming back to your question, yes, it hurts. I'd like yes, to wrap hurts, this up on this note only, on this, on this note of love and hope, Neil, I'd like to wrap this up. Uh, thank you to you and to Paris for joining us tonight and sharing your thoughts. Hopefully, the struggle will end soon for all of you and you will be, you know, not be as frustrated and as anxious as you particularly are right now. Thank you very much thank to both you so of you much. for joining and us. And happy Pride to Mira now and everybody on the team. Thank you.